All right, guys. Hello. This is Steve Rudusky from the Gaming Careers Podcast and thecompanybard.com. Uh, what I thought I would do today is do a comparison unboxing between the Game Crafter print on demand service and another larger uh, Chinese manufacturer. So, my goal here is I'm working on a game. And what I thought uh, would be really useful is to determine what is the print quality of the gaming, uh, the Gaming Careers podcast. That's me. Hello. Uh, from the Game Crafter, see, same initials from the Game Crafter. Um, versus what I might get if I went through Kickstarter and a larger print run. So uh, I will have a separate video kind of talking about what my goals are behind all of this, but I thought it might be useful to show you what I'm seeing kind of right out of the packaging um, by comparing the games. Now, it's what's in really interesting to s about this test, which is why I'm interested in doing it, is I, I managed to get a copy of the exact same game printed from both um, within very close printings of one another or, or really close re um, timing of one another. So a good friend of mine, Trevor Lehman at Convergent, Convergent Games, uh, and I'll have the links to that in the, uh, the description here, um, recently produced a game named Crop Cycle, and he had a very successful Kickstarter, and he's been he's been selling it around at different conventions and doing quite well with it. He still had the files, the master files, available on the Game Crafter. So um, what I did is I purchased two versions of the same game. He was kind enough to let me purchase a the, the quote-unquote prototype, and he, he used um, the Game Crafter for his prototype originally when putting everything together. So I was able to get kind of an updated print run from that and then compare it against the um, the brand new copy that he get, got from his Kickstarter. So um, if you don't know Trevor, Trevor is, uh, again, like I said, he's from Convergent Games, but uh, he really does a lot for the community. He uh, puts out a lot of great content about how to uh, operate at a convention since he's he's excellent at that he really does a lot for uh, putting into the community so hello trevor hello hello uh and i invite i invite and suggest that everyone check out his uh his website at convergentgames.com all right enough of that <clears throat> so what i got this is two versions uh of the same game um all i've done so far is unpack um them just on their outer sleeves to make sure that the, um, the packages weren't damaged and I wasn't kind of comparing anything that uh, wouldn't be like itself. Um, besides that, uh, I didn't notice that there was any kind of business quality difference between how they were shipped. Uh, this is the Chinese manufacturing one. Uh, and I know that uh, Trevor sent this. So this is through, from the publisher, not directly from the manufacturer, of course. But it uh, came very well uh, secured in bubble wrap. Okay, um, and no damage or anything like that. Uh, so I was very pleased with how that came in. And then the other one, this one right here, came directly from the Game Crafter. Um, when that is opened, I can get it open here. Oops, that's why, upside down. It was from, let's see here. It had... Um, little piece of packing paper maybe not quite as nice but you know these are all things that you throw away so i don't that's uh, no big deal to me and then here is the game crafter version of crop cycle okay and one of the things that you'll notice let's see if i can get a good comparison here is that it's the same front dimension one of the main differences there is that there is a thickness difference uh, the Chinese manufacturer has uh, a thicker box. That I don't know whether that was something that was part of their um, main uh, stock that they had readily available. So that was what was made it cheap there. Um, but this right here is the small pro box. Oops, right here. Got to turn it the right way. This right here is the small pro box from um, the Game Crafter. Uh, I'm very pleased with this box. So in the process of putting together my own game, I am... Um, I, I purchased a number of different blanks uh, on it. So right here is another purchase that I have made, uh, which is just the small pro box. Um, I'm very pleased with it overall. Um, it's got kind of a nice feel to it. 
Um, some of the reviews that I've seen from Game Crafter on some of the larger boxes um, weren't didn't stand up uh, as much, but I know that the Game Crafter JT at the Game Crafter has done a great job of looking to update his boxes. So at some point, I will have to check out his larger boxes and see how they hold up. But for me, these are kind of very solid. And what I was interested in when I got this was um, okay. How does it look with the printing on the box? Because the box itself is nice. Um, I think maybe a difference is maybe some of the bowing uh, of the box that might be different from a larger manufacturer. But I, I don't know that that's the case. Um, I'm just I'm very pleased with this. So, all right. One thing that you'll notice about the shrink wrap on the outside is um, this one is more custom done so it's it's not i don't know whether or not they had a bag that they slid it in and then um kind of heat treated it to shrink that down um versus this one that has just a little bit more polish around how they um wrap that up with the plastic this is the chinese uh, manufacturing um but again to me while there's a slight difference there um i don't notice it as being um anything affecting its quality because again this is something that's going to come right off and go right in the garbage so um okay that's that let us open up i'm seeing what's happening this is the um game crafter version of crop cycle okay all right so without the plastic, I'm still seeing um, pretty vibrant colors. I'm very pleased with that. Um, the edges, let's see here, are looking pretty nice. You can focus in there. There we go. That's all looking pretty good. Crop cycle. Come on, focus. And then some vibrant color on the back here. All right, let's see if there's any difference with the uh, Chinese manufacturing company. Okay. So here, as far as color printing, um, I think I'm getting a little bit nicer of a shine. Oops, nicer of a shine off of this uh, Chinese manufacturing box. Um, it is thicker, so it has a, a, a better heft to it, I think. Um, and then one of the things that I noticed is that it's thicker. Let's see, right in here, it's thicker um, in in this tuck-in portion. Um, so it kind of has a fuller telescoping function maybe of, of the box, but you know, that's, you know, super, super nitpicky. I am not noticing, you know, it's, it's definitely sturdy. It is definitely sturdier, but I'm not noticing something that would say, oh, I definitely, th this one is, is kicking it out of, out of bed because it's not, it's not working, um, for my needs compared to this one. All right. So opening up cardstock. This is uh, the Game Crafter Crop Cycle. Okay. All right. So here, as we can see inside the um, inside the box, I'm trying to get that even. There we go. There we go. Um, it looks like we have two um, Ziploc bags on the inside, and it's got a little bit of writing probably from where this was uh this item was put together ziploc bag again with it needs to be assembled with this product and then a third one and these are the tokens associated with each okay so i can this doesn't bother me at all uh, i'm fine with this i can see that uh, depending on the complexity of your game um, and kind of what your impression is or what you want to have going out to uh, your customers. Ziploc bags um, may not be as favorable to you as like inserts and uh, cards that are in a, a plastic sleeve that you then uh, open up. Uh, personally, I like having a Ziploc bag because uh, it's reusable. I can reuse it for other stuff and I have other game um, uh, boxes that I can use that with. 
Um, but that is, uh, that's maybe purely up to preference. Um, what my guess is, is that as part of the manufacturing process, there's just a lot of these bags around uh, that uh, have been purchased in bulk, are easy. They don't need to be customized for the individual uh, components, things of that nature. So let's see what the next step is here with the Chinese manufacturer. Okay, it's got a nice snug <laughs> thing going on in there. Okay. Okay. Uh, so here, upon opening the the box, there's a little bit better presentation. Um, it just in that you kind of your user experience is such that uh, I see the rule book right on top. I know what it is. Um, the uh, uh, printing on that rule book is nice. Um, and I think here is what I was talking about um, with what might be different between the two. And again, this is unboxing, so I had no idea what was in here, but a lot of companies have this uh, kind of uh, plastic seal, plastic wrap around the cards, in which case um, you could, uh, you're going to take that off, of course, uh, and then it's going to be in the box itself. It does have an extra baggie. Um, and one looks like one main difference is the kind of thickness uh, of the tokens card. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. But uh, one of the things that I'm thinking about here with the the manufacturer, the Chinese manufacturing, is there's not an insert, and this maybe is a something just as a, a production choice um, that would hold these two card decks together uh, or hold, hold them in place. So, you know, when I un take that uh, uh, plastic wrap off, uh, they're potentially going to wiggle around in there. Um, and uh, that may or may not be something that you um, uh, care about. Whereas with the plastic wraps, if you want to make sure that they don't wiggle around as much, maybe that's useful to you. One thing that I will note as a comparison, let me take all of the pieces out here. Oops, throwing things around, throwing things around. Is on the box, um, there is a really nice, I mean, this is uh, the Chinese manufacturing. It's nice and thick on the sides, very, very thick, very inflexible, uh, seems very highly permanent. Um, and there's nice gloss on, on the sides here. Uh, that's very sharp looking. Here, it is a little bit, a um, little bit lighter of cardboard, um, but it's not flimsy. Uh, it just doesn't have quite the same sheen on it and quite the same um, uh, ri rigidity. Okay, so that's that. All right, so tokens. The tokens here, let me show you here, are pretty thin. That's uh, really hard to pick up on the camera. Um, I think they look all right. They look pretty nice, but the cardstock is pretty, pretty thin here. Um, and I'm not sure if from the Game Cat Crafter there are other options. I know that they have a variety of different tiles, but I'm not sure if their punch boards, um, their punch tokens, have the ability to uh, to be thicker. But right here, let's see if I can get that in there. Uh, that is pretty thin, and I can see over the course of um, uh, working with them for a longer period of time that you might fold them or, you know, they might uh, begin to feel flimsy or something of that nature. Um, see they come apart pretty, pretty easily. All right. And then here, this is maybe one thing that's different. I'll check on the, 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 uh, um, in the other bag here in just a second. But this is obviously print uh, printed uh, per the number of units that uh, Trevor needed for his game. There are some blank things here. Um, I don't know. That might be a turnoff to some players to have some uh, extra uh, little holes that aren't needed and aren't part of the printing process. Um, for me, whether it's tokens or uh, small... 
figures that are kind of that I have to pop out little plastic figures that I have to pop out of their their rigging. Uh, I'm just going to throw all of that stuff away anyway. I'm not going to keep it. So for me, what I'm trying to what I would do, my personal um, opinion would be how does this token feel in gameplay over time compared to the thicker tokens? So, yeah. Let me just, since I've done the process here, we're going to pop out the, the other ones. Do, 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 do. All right. So we're going to put those to the side. And I'm not going to use the rest of these. They will go in circular file. Okay. So let's compare that against the tokens uh, in the Chinese manufacturing game. Okay. So here you can see that it is much, much thicker, okay? Up on the edge, uh, you can see that uh, this is a much thicker surface. Um, it is much more rigid. Um, and this is something that uh, has a nice heft to it when you pop out the tokens. Um, and these tokens might be very, uh, are very substantive. So uh, they have a little bit of heft in your hand um, they, they're thick enough. Let's see if I can get real close in here. They're thick enough that they have a pseudo coin feel. Um, and let me just go do, 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 do. as a comparison. Okay. So this is obviously the uh, Chinese manufacturer. This right here. Um, is mostly just a card, a thin card stock printed. Uh, they both look pretty sharp. I like that. Um, but I think this one over time, if, you're, if your game has a lot of small little uh, punch boards or, or tokens that are going to be handled a lot, that might be something that uh, might make the difference for you. Uh, for me, the game that I'm working on is primarily cards, so it's not a, uh, not a, a big deal. Um, but that might be something that you would want to keep track of over time is how does how is your game constructed and is the are all of the prints uh, print on demand services are they able to provide the pieces that you need and uh, are they of sufficient quality that you're going to kind of be proud of your game um, in the hands of your customer um, and you'll really have to tell there's a lot of uh, print and place services that are out there or several of them. I know a lot of them are fairly limited into cards because cards are the easiest place to start. Um, as far as the punch board, I know that that's available from the game crafter. I'm not through what other uh, vendors are going to be uh, particularly helpful, but I think on the tokens, the, the Chinese manufacturing company definitely has a nice experience, a nice heft to their pieces. And, um, yeah, I think over time, if this was a kind of a permanent installment type of game, I might prefer this one uh, over the Game Crafter. All right. I've been stalling on the cards because I'm most excited to see how those compare. And again, since this is an unboxing and it's live, I'm afraid. Because <laughs> I, I, of course, want the easiest solution for myself and the, at the highest quality. All right. So there we go. That's going to go back in our box. Back in our box. Token punch board is going to go over there. Okay. So, Farmer's Fortune. I'm going to compare these two right here. Um, obviously, this one's in a bag. We talked about how that may be uh, a plus or minus, depending on your, uh, your personal preference. So, again, your mileage may vary. Okay. Here are the cards uh, from the Game Crafter. One of the things that I'm noting is just as far as their print quality, uh, I am pleased with uh, kind of the brilliance of the card. It's nice. It feels professional. The, um, the cards themselves. Has a nice flick to it to me. Okay. Why am I doing this? I have no idea. No, that's not true. Uh, there's a lot of different places where I'm seeing that the flick component um, is something that's uh, important and kind of affects how you feel about the, the game over time. 
Um, so let's see here. Backs of the cards. Um, one of the things that I will notice or will point out is uh, the black border on that um, is going to the edge. But I think over the time where the, the wear of the cards on the side, the white may come away uh, or the, the white edges might creep in and the sides of the card might fray a little bit. Now, one of the things that I don't know is I know that the Game Crafter has the ability to do a UV coating and a linen finish. Um, I can't tell if this has the UV coating on it. Um, I'll have to kind of get some blanks to, to compare that against later. I, I know that it certainly doesn't have a linen finish on it. Um, that uh, And th those are all design decisions uh, when using the Game Crafter. And I know that uh, Trevor was, when starting this process, that he was always planning on moving towards the uh, uh, Chinese manufacturer. So I'm, I'm sure he didn't add too much extra uh, manufacturing costs when uh, throwing out, uh, when creating these these as a demo to send out to people. But as far as a demo goes, this would, I, I feel very, very strongly that this would be a very great showing for a, uh, a prototype. And for me, uh, pretty good on a finished product as well. Uh, for me, uh, I would probably see about, uh, I'm going to explore more of the linen finish and the UV coating. Um, since my game is primarily cards, I would want to uh, have those cards as nice as possible um, since that's going to be the main handling component. And if I'm thinking about it as a finished product, uh, I want to kind of do what's best for the game crafter having as much polish on the end of uh, the end of the production run as possible. But just kind of flipping through, um, again, seeing good color, good vibrancy there. Ooh, I like that one. It's nice. Got some good detail in it. Okay. Um, one thing that I will say is that, um, ooh, I like that card. Um, one thing that I will say is that I can feel on the sides of the cards um, where they've been cut. So the machining on them uh, is a little bit rough on the fingers. Um, it also might mean that, uh, you know, this, this is uh, a surface that will, that could wear over time. Um, it's just something that I'm aware of. Um, but I don't think it's a deal breaker. It doesn't make me feel strongly one way or another. Um, but since this is a direct comparison, I want to kind of give the, the idea, um, of what this feels like to you guys. Uh, and hopefully that's useful to you. Um, I can definitely tell that these have been kind of machine cut, not that they're uneven or anything. I can just feel the machining. All right, so that is that deck. Let's put it up here so we can see what we're comparing. This looks to me to be the same same flavor. I'm gonna be careful and open up my card stock. And this is this is slightly, like I said before, a little bit more professional in that uh, it's it's kind of shrink wrapped. Okay. Here are the cards. So this is one of the, the reasons why I wanted to point out what this deck felt like um, is there's an immediate kind of impression difference or a tactile impression difference. So the cards here are really, really smooth. I can I can feel that there's the machine uh, machining cut, but um, while with this deck right here, uh, it was kind of a little sandy. Um, or like really fine sandpaper. Um, this feels um, much more like running your finger across a sheet of paper. So it's much smoother, except around the edges. And I get that little bit of sandpaper grit along the outside. So when you're handling the cards, this might be something that affects your user experience. Uh, in which case, I would say that the Chinese manufacturer has a slight uh, advantage uh, over the game crafter for that level of that finish level of pro um, polish. Okay. Um, so now let's kind of check here. Oh, this is tough. Okay. Hold on.
so it feels man this is really hard so it feels like the the chinese manufacturing card is slightly slightly thicker uh with just a little bit more twang in it and i'm trying to be as critical as i possibly can here because this is uh, this is my decision process for making my own game, and I'm sure that uh, I, you'll want to kind of know these things for your own as well. But, and I have to, to put out there that I am by no means an expert in any of this. So this is just my complete novice impression of how the cards feel, how do the components feel, what is my level of, you know, um, what is my impression when I'm opening these, and I can feel just kind of in the thickness. Maybe that's how I do it. When I move my, my thumb across and kind of pull, dig into the card itself, it feels like this, this card stock from the Chinese manufacturer is just a hair thicker. But I don't know that if I had both, that if I didn't have both to compare side by side, um, that it would matter that much to me. Um, but again, Honesty and direct com uh, direct comparison. Uh, colors. Let's check colors. Go on. There we go. Um, oh, full disclosure here. I'm mostly colorblind. Um, so I'm just looking for comparisons. But those look pretty sharp to me on both sides be interested to hear your comments below let's see uh get the right glare and if i can get it in there we go that's decent focus 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 all right so they look very very similar to me all right going through here uh, I will say that when flipping through the deck of cards, there is some sort of thickness difference. Um, and that thickness difference is, is it can be felt um, kind of when interacting with the whole deck. It's a little bit springier. Okay. So when going through the whole deck here, it has a, just a little bit more give to it this way. And that might affect your um, bridging with it. Let's see. Sorry if I'm not supposed to mix these up, Trevor. Doing it for the goodness of the test. They feel good on side, side shuffle. The uh, uh, bridge felt okay, too. Actually, I liked it. Feels like a new deck of cards, which is good because it is a new deck of cards. All right. Okay. I think that's that's for that deck there. That's the Game Crafter. Now here, again, a little bit smoother on the sides. The color seems uh, good. Uh, yeah, and there is a little bit of that difference when pushing against the whole deck here. A uh, little bit more thickness. A uh, little bit smoother on my thumb. Uh, when I am uh, shuffling. Again, just feels a little bit, a little bit more polished. Now, I'm not sure how the the experience is supposed to work with uh, the cards. Sorry, Trevor, haven't played it yet. Um, but um, these are a little bit stiff for easy shuffling. Um, I think when held in hand, since, um, the main point is not to shuffle the cards, I think it's probably a good thing that they're thicker, but they are just a little bit harder to, um, uh, to shuffle. I have to put a little bit more force on it. So as you can see, I'm getting a little bit of bend, uh, again, no big deal. All right. And it looks like there is some slight variation on the, the two uh, in the two decks. I'll have to see here. No, sorry, that one was just a colorblind thing. All right. So I'm going to pull in the last uh, deck here. 
So the Chinese manufacturing right here. Very nice and bright. Okay. I think we have largely more of the same as far as, oh, here's some of your reference cards. Got that. Let's uh, pull those out. Same nice, smooth edging on it. Thick and stiff to bridge shuffle. All right. So I think that's that. And I would assume that this right over here is the same equivalent for the Game Crafter. Yep, we have our reference cards. Yep. Okay. All right. I like that. So there's not really anything new to report. Uh, again, I can feel on the sides of the cards here that uh, they are a little bit sandier, a little bit grittier, um, just from the machining process. Um, and I'm not, I don't think that that would adversely affect me, um, but it is a notable difference. All right. So, or I got to be careful. It's not a notable difference. It's something that I noted as a difference, but it is not a notable difference. See, words matter. Okay. Uh, one thing is it doesn't look like the Game Crafter version has uh, a rule book in it. That's fine. That, again, would not be the case if you were ordering it as your primary um, your primary vendor. In this case, it was just because um, that was the decisions that uh, Trevor did when he was putting it together. Uh, this is, of course, the final copy. Um, this looks like it is uh, would fit in the small... Pro box. I'd have to. I'm going to check into rule books uh, from the Game Crafter as well. Um, but this is. Let's see. One, two, three, four pages, front and back. Um, the color is nice. I'm not going to go too far in depth about the booklet since I don't have it to compare against. Um, but okay. So overall impressions. Um, if I had them side by side uh, and they were exactly the same price, I would probably buy the Chinese manufactured one. Exactly the same price. I'm like, okay, it's thicker. Um, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't know this until I opened it, but the uh, the cardstock is just a little bit thicker. The box itself is um, really, really nice and sturdy. Um, and it's thicker, right? So if I'm looking at a price tag, I would probably say, ooh, wow, look, um, I'm getting more of a game <laughs> because um, it's it's a thicker box. It obviously is, is put together with a little bit more um, uh, tender loving care and whatnot. But if I just had um, the one or the other and they were both priced the same, Man, this is a tough one. Um, I don't think... Um, so the cards, the box wouldn't be... A, uh, wouldn't have a sell, sell feature on me one, one way or the other. Um, this is kind of their demo box. Um, in fact, the, the way that the small box fits is a little bit truer to the, the components in the game. If I had this one, uh, I might be a little disappointed that there's not kind of little uh, meeples or uh, little placeholders or something like that. Whereas in this, I know that these would only be cards. Um, probably the only, only, only difference would be those little tokens. Those little tokens. So... Having these super, super thin tokens, again, remembering that this is specifically for a prototype. It was originally created for a prototype. So while I'm trying to compare apples to apples as closely as possible, I can only do that to a limited extent. Um, this thinness of a, um, of a token, while it doesn't affect the gameplay for the actual game, may affect my uh, interest in the longevity. Um, but like I said, I know that the Game Crafter has other alternatives. So if I was thinking about this as a finished product, 
um, I might invest into um, uh, larger larger tokens, little chipboard uh, sort of stuff. I know that GameCrafter has a bunch of different stuff there, but I would probably want to find an alternative uh, to this little token. Okay. So I'm going to have some business assessment stuff and another component of this in the write-up, but I think for unboxing, this was a very successful unboxing comparison. Um, if you guys have any questions about um, what things feel like or um, what questions you would have for me about this game as a direct comparison, I'm pretty excited that I have both copies um, here that were printed. Um, I, I ordered this um, right off the presses. Trevor sent his, so it has the most recent um, level of technology from the Game Crafter, and Game Crafter's getting better all the time. Um, and um, so... Um, yeah, leave me, leave me comments in the, in the section below, and, uh, I'd be happy to answer what, uh, my impressions are of any of the differences, uh, should you have them, and, uh, maybe help you make some decisions for your own game project. Okay? Thanks so much. Bye!